let's get started and let's talk about what's going on right now in the staffing industry and how our listeners can start to future proof. All right, we'll start. We'll start with the all favorite, all encompassing economy. We started the last three years. I think we started with the economy. We talked about recession, whether it was a recession, whether it was. It really, really doesn't matter. It's up, it's down. It's completely out of our control. So we have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. And we know that great talent is always hard to find. And that means there's going to always be opportunities for staffing. We also know that selling is a lot harder this year. It's more complicated. It's harder to reach people. And we have a number of presenters, some really good stuff coming up. So I'm not going to steal their thunder. They're going to talk to you about how to sell. You also may find a situation, though, that a lot of your internal team members have never been through a recession. Maybe you've never been through a recession. And in this economy, you need to change your approach to staffing. You need to change your messaging. And you're going to hear from us a little bit and from multiple speakers throughout the day about how to tweak what you're saying to really focus on the value of staffing services. Well, and along, along with the team members, we've got this new situation of remote and hybrid work and, and some people in your office, but also for your clients. In staffing, you have to find ways to find, help employers get work done. And that's going to create new opportunities to manage workforce strategy. Yeah, it's really odd. We're actually in the same building today working. It's it's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> another big topic for today is going to be digital transformation. So automation, what to automate, how to automate. Um, is staffing, is the industry becoming a platform? Is there going to be an Uber of staffing? And what about all of our job security as automation takes over for functions in staffing. So you're going to hear from a couple of different speakers talking about the impact of automation on staffing, sales, and recruiting. And you couldn't do a presentation right now this year without that sexy term, AI. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have at least <laughs> what? No, I think we have three talks on AI today. And this conversation that we're going to have is going to go walk through what I did to, to um, use AI. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. As I know in prepping for this, uh, I did old school, take a lot of notes, and you did the smart thing and reached out to Chat GPT and asked Chat GPT for some help. So tell us a little bit about what you did. Oh, it's coming up. Really? You want me to talk about it now? Okay. What would you ask? So I asked the first question I asked what it was just what are the possible changes that we see in staffing and recruiting industry over the next one to five years based on the current economic, political, social, and technology trends. So I believe we have a guest presenter now, Sophia, who's going to give uh, a response to that question. Predicting the future with certainty is challenging, but we can speculate on some possible changes in the staffing industry over the next few years based on current trends in the economy, politics, society, and technology. Here are a few things to consider. Remote work emphasis. COVID-19 accelerated the adoption of remote work. In the next few years, remote work might remain a significant aspect of many industries. Staffing agencies may focus on recruiting talent with strong remote work skills and employers may seek candidates who can seamlessly integrate into remote work environments. Next, let's look at skill over degrees. The emphasis on specific skills over traditional degrees could continue to grow. This shift might prompt staffing agencies to focus more on skill assessments and certifications, helping match candidates to roles based on their actual abilities rather than formal education. Diversity and inclusion is another hot topic. We're likely to see even more emphasis on diverse candidate pools, and staffing agencies may be able to gain an edge by placing greater focus on sourcing and presenting candidates from a wide range of backgrounds. How about the gig economy? The gig economy is expected to continue growing. Staffing agencies might adapt to this trend by offering more flexible work arrangements and assisting companies in managing a blend of full-time employees and freelance or contract workers. Last but not least, consider automation and AI integration. Automation and AI can streamline many aspects of the recruitment process, such as resume screening, initial candidate outreach, and interview scheduling. This frees recruiters to focus on relationship building and more strategic services, like workforce planning. Vicky, why don't you share the other ideas from ChatGPT? <laughs> okay, she's just a little bit creepy when she says Vicky <laughs> to me, but thank you, Sophia. <laughs> that was a that was a, an experiment that we did in what Synthesia? Yes. Very cool. 
But there's a few more responses that ChatGPT gave me and some other changes that we might see, such as upskilling and reskilling. So rapid technology changes make skills, some skills, obsolete, but it's going to create demand for new ones. Staffing agencies could collaborate with employers to offer upskilling and reskilling programs, kind of a different angle on that. Global talent pool. There's remote work and virtual collaboration can lead to more globalization of talent. So we could expand our reach to source talent from all over the world to meet demand for a specialized skill. Things like um, remote work integration. I know Sophia mentioned it, but there's an opportunity to provide guidance to our clients on building and managing remote teams. There's also an opportunity for soft, soft skills assessments as communication, adaptability, emotional intelligence become more vital to success. An agency might develop and test methods for assessing those skills. And we didn't mention it before, but regulatory changes. And I think that that's going to be probably a topic as well. There's so many changes in labor laws and regulations that are impacting staffing and recruiting. An agency has to stay informed and make adjustments, but you're also going to have to educate your clients on these changes. Yeah, we're just looking at AI and clearly there's the, the issues of bias that have to be dealt with AI and then other regulatory. If, you know, if you're in New Jersey, you're in Illinois, um, the laws going on there and how staffing companies can deal with them are a huge issue. So I love that um, you know your quick question to chat GPT outperformed my brain in coming up with, we just summarized 10 of, I think, the first 15 responses. But then um, also you asked some additional questions to chat GPT. So what else did you ask? Well, Okay, so I like to use AI to reveal my personal blind spots. I think it's a really good use for it. So instead of always asking to answer my questions, I like to ask the AI to ask me questions and then use those questions to develop new prompts. So I asked, if you're leading a discussion about the future of staffing and recruiting industry, what questions might you ask? And then I also asked, if you owned a staffing company, what are some changes you would make today to be ready for the future? And chat GPT provide, provided some really good responses here too. You want to hit any of these, David? Yeah. I, what, first one I like is improving your data-driven insights. So creating an analytic system. So you're really using information to drive decision-making as opposed to just relying on gut. Yeah. You can um, use it for candidate experience. So AI-driven chatbots to access uh candidate questions or to be available 24-7 throughout the application process, but then also to provide personalized guidance throughout the hiring process. Yeah, another response was about using um, or excuse me, embracing environmental and social responsibility. So we, we hear about this, but the practical reality is, is incorporating sustainability into a staffing business and social responsibility into a staffing business is a way to improve your company's mission, vision, the values you live by. And also you can partner with organizations that have the same kind of commitment and give yourself a competitive advantage in winning staffing work from those kinds of companies. Um, I think that we're going to really have to create a continuous learning culture. So all this AI, but also just keep your, your, your team updated on industry trends and emerging emerging technologies. Boy, I can't say that today. Um, beyond AI providing that training to your recruiters. Yeah, and ChatGPT, ironically, told us that we need to worry about implementing AI ethically. And as I mentioned a minute ago, there are potential biases in the use of AI. And right now in some states, uh, lovely New York where I am is one of them, the burden is on the user of the AI technology to prove that there is not bias in the technology. So there's going to be a lot of emerging regulation, but you need to be extra careful if you're using AI anywhere in your hiring process to ensure it is not unintentionally screening out candidates in an unfair way. I think ultimately we have to really adopt an agile business model. You have to have this mindset that we're going to experience change. You have to be able to quickly adapt to the economic conditions, industry trends, your clients' demands. And you're going to have to offer flexible staffing solutions to accommodate the gig economy and variable workforce needs. Yeah, I couldn't, I just kind of build on that one a little bit, Vicky, because time has accelerated. And I think a lot of that is due to technology. I mean, look at if, if it was not even a year ago, um, November of last year, this little company called OpenAI was basically a tech company almost nobody knew about. Then they launched their large language model, uh, 
chat GPT out into the masses. And all of a sudden, now it explodes about February this year that AI is everywhere. So what does that mean? That means it's influenced how we do a lot of different things. And it's influencing our daily work lives in just a matter of months. So what's it going to be like three months, six months, a year from now? The ability to, to adapt quickly will make a huge impact. All right, Vicky. So I know you asked ChatGPT one more question. This is another thing you love to do and I absolutely love. So what was the last question you asked? All right, I did. I, I asked ChatGPT to share some more obscure ideas. Um, I find that using that term gives me some really off the wall ideas. So I asked for obscure ideas for changes that a staffing company owner should consider making today to be ready for the future. And these are really interesting food for thought. Like the, some of them are just really off the wall. So I'll go through a couple. Um, virtual reality skills assessment. All right, think about that. So we uh, we create this virtual environment and then you bring in somebody, a CNC person to run a machine and you can watch them do it real time in virtual reality from wherever they are. Yeah, we actually have a client that's doing that for forklift driver training already. They've been doing it for a couple of years now. Really cool pro program. Something, Vicki, I know you've been big on is blockchain and blockchain coming to credential verification. Think about, you know, we're, right now we see online reviews everywhere, but they're not verified. With blockchain, we can have verified reviews. We can have a verified resume. We could have verified skills. It could be a game changer for not having to send somebody a resume that they have to interpret. I think that we're going to head that direction. It's going to replace resumes. I don't know if it's in a year or in 10 years, but I do think we will head that direction. I think you're also going to see crowdsourcing of candidate vetting because you've got a network of people. They can provide insights and recommendations about a candidate's skills and capabilities. There's probably some regulatory issues with that, but I do think between the blockchain and crowdsourcing, you're going to find a whole new way to find out what someone's skills are, what their soft skills are, and what their background is. Yeah. Speaking of soft skills, ChatGPT suggested we look at emotional intelligence assessment for teamwork and leadership. Really, I know we do behavioral assessments, but I haven't seen a lot on emotional intelligence and understanding how people will be able to work on your team and on your clients' teams. Yeah. I And I think that opens up... Um, kind of a different thought process on um, who you can hire. So really thinking about neurodiversity focused recruitment, providing support and accommodation that enables candidates with conditions like autism to thrive in a workplace. There's a, a whole group of people that we're not putting to work that are available. And when we need workers, we should be thinking about this. Yeah, and even just uh, thinking about broader neurodiversity, actually screening people based on how they think differently can give clients a huge advantage in terms of diversity of thought in their organization. Um, this is another really cool idea from ChatGPT, job customization. I would love to see this. Uh, options where candidates can co-create roles based on their unique strengths and interests to actually tailor what they're doing to what the client needs, the projects they need done could be a completely new way to think about staffing. Mm -hmm. This one kind of creeped me out. Kind of totally like creeped me out. So think about biofeedback in an interview. Okay. I, I don't know if that we should go this route, but yeah, GPT suggested it. So we'll talk about it. Yeah, but I just have this vision of the AI, like plugging itself into us, reading our brain. I don't know. We'll just skip that one. It's a little, no, I don't want to skip it. It's a little like <laughs> Elon Musk -y, though. They like with his, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we want to go there, but if you use a biofeedback device during an interview, you can assess stress levels and understand reactions in real time. So that might have a, an opportunity in the future. I don't know. But that does lead to another one, which is using predictive analysis to assess company fit. Because every staffing company, we're looking at providing the best fit candidates, but we're trying to do it now based on skills assessment, based on behavioral interviewing techniques, and predictive analytics can be a game changer in helping us look at somebody's past to really predict their future. Uh, ChatGPT also offered up some other service options. So one of those would be personal branding services. We all need to have some kind of presence on social media and we have personal brands now. So helping candidates curate their online presence to showcase their skills effectively. I think that could be a possible add-on service. Yeah, I really like that one because if you think about skill marketing people, we will call someone, we'll send an email out and we summarize a few skills, but really helping that individual create the right presence to sell themselves would be huge for the candidate. 
uh, huge for the staffing company. I know personally, Vicki, for you and I, like something we've done with our kids is how to present themselves to employers when they're looking for work in the best way, whether it's through a website or how they're going about the job seeking process. Um, for those in professional services, executive recruiting, uh, personal branding as a service could be a completely new line to augment what you're doing in staffing and recruiting. Yeah, I was just thinking about Trevor, our youngest. He's in the middle of a job search right now, and he really doesn't know how to handle any of this. And, you know, some of the things that he may be posting online are a little questionable as well, and <laughs> how to present himself. He doesn't know. So he needs someone to lead that. Um, also, niche market specialization. So looking for emerging markets within an ind industry and then specializing in recruiting for those segments. It's right back to differentiation. Yeah, and it's about finding you know those micro niches that you can really specialize in and develop an advantage over others. And we talked to a lot of people who are doing things like IT staffing. And one of the things we encourage is don't just be generic IT staffing, pick skill disciplines, pick vertical markets, pick technologies where you can be one of a tiny number of competitors that are really good in that area. Okay, so chat GPT, Vicky, I'm just I love how you approach prompting because it gives such great responses. But let's wrap up for everybody with a few take homes. And I'm going to kick things off with a quote from Jeff Bezos. And the quote is, I get asked quite frequently, what's going to change in the next 10 years? One thing I rarely get asked is probably even more important. And it's the question, what's not going to change over the next 10 years? So if you think about the recruiting and staffing industry, what's not going to change? You know, even with AI, there's going to be need for people to do work and for human interaction. It's going to be hard to find talent with specific skills and people who are the right fit. That's never going to change. Um, there's going to be variability in the demand for talent, uh, seasonality. That's not going to change. Job switching. People are going to change jobs and careers multiple times. They're not going to want to do the same thing forever. We're going to see a need from organizations to find ways to drive productivity, particularly in a down market. That's how you get out. We're going to see increasing challenges with compliance and employment laws as they become more complex. We're going to probably see forever. Most people don't like to hire. It's not fun. If you're in staffing, you may love it, but most of your clients don't. That's not going to change. And I don't think it's going to change that everyone's going to want to pay staffing fees, but it'll, well, they will always pay for staffing's value. Yeah. So Vicky, what can we do now? There's probably even a longer list of what won't change. And I think it's a, a great exercise to do is really sit down and think about what is the core value that we you provide as a staffing company or, and or a recruiter and what won't change in the future. So things you can do starting today, get closer to your clients. You really have to speak their language. I know from onboarding a lot of employees at Haley Marketing Group, the staffing industry has its own verbiage, its own vernacular, and it can be really difficult to understand. Yeah, I'm smiling because I'm working with a new marketing quarterback we just brought on board. And his first question was, do you guys have an acronym guide of all these staffing terms? Uh, you, you almost need it, right? We need to approach staffing as a business strategy to solve problems for clients. And you need to speak the client's language when you're presenting that to them. We need to focus on the customer experience, but not just for clients, for candidates as well. We're not just filling orders. These are people's lives. You need to remove friction and make it easier, faster, and fun. I know, fun for clients and candidates to work with your company. So really think about where are those places that make that it's difficult to work with? What are you asking your clients to do that you could take off their plate instead? Yeah, for me, one of the, the take homes is training. Um, because the market has changed, you may have salespeople, you may have recruiters that understand what your business does, that understands how you find great talent, that understands everything you do to screen and vet and provide the right person for the right job. But in this market, they may not understand the value of staffing. What is the strategic value of staffing as a way to control costs, improve productivity, manage risk? They may not understand how to use staffing and recruiting services as a business tool. And they need that training so they can go out and sell the value of your services to create more opportunities for your company. Mm -hmm. You really need to decide what kind of business do you want to be? Are you a high volume, high speed, high efficient? Is that is that your niche? Or are you more of the high touch, high service boutique? So really figuring out 
what makes you different. And that can make you a super superpower for your company to grow. Uh, I think we talk about that multiple times. You have to differentiate. It's not going to be good enough to be good enough. Yeah. And it's it's one of the challenges in a down market is you want to say, oh, anybody who's willing to place a job order is a good client. And that may be true for taking an order, but in your marketing, in your selling, you can't try to be all things to all people because that creates the perception that you're just a commodity. And right now, you need to be the brain surgeon of the industry, the specialist that your clients are turning to, to solve the problems that they're having in 2023 and 2024. And then I guess the last one on our list, um, which you're going to hear more about is automation and outsourcing to improve your own efficiency and productivity, embracing automation tools in sales, in recruiting, in your marketing from when people first engage with you on your website and they're checking things out right through service delivery using automation tools to ensure the best possible client and candidate experience and make sure you're delivering it consistently, not to replace what people are doing, but to replace the mundane part of what people need to do so that your salespeople and recruiters can focus more on the human part of staffing and the relationship building and embracing AI. 